Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. A few days ago there was a small package on my doorstep. Just a small one. I just finished my last exam and can now start with my master thesis. For me that's enough of an excuse to buy some new equipment. In a few years I will buy new equipment just for the achievement of getting up in the morning. In this video we will take a first look at the Sharpstar 130 HNT. I record this video a few days after the first testing nights to give you a slightly more coherent introduction to this awesome piece of technology. The NT stands for Newton Telescope and the H for the emotion I feel when the clouds roll in after I set up. An aperture of 130mm, a focal length of about this many millimeters for those of you counting at home, which comes to a focal ratio of 2.8, which in astrophotography is such a great value. With such a big focal ratio you really need to get your focus routine dialed in, because there's just a small window of pinpoint focus. That's one of the reasons to have this telescope fitted with a rack and pinion focuser. The other reason being that the alternative, a Crayford focuser, is just awful. This telescope comes with a main hyperbolic mirror, flat secondary mirror in a carbon fiber tube to hold the focus the entire night, but you know I will definitely test that in the future. There is also a two element field corrector in the focus tube, which according to the manufacturer should allow a flat field up to full frame. But sadly one thing is still missing for me. Equipment is attached via the screw thread, which is great. But if you only have a screw thread, you must also outfit such telescope with a rotator. Right now if I need to rotate the camera to get a better orientation, I need to loosen these tipped screws, rotate the entire focuser and lock them again. That's annoying and definitely covers the secondary mirror in fine metal dust. Not great. I checked the collimation with the laser and at first I felt that it was a little off, could be the transport, but I left it like that to test it out on the star. I attached the focuser to the tube and got ready for... I set up the telescope with the camera facing down, in order to reduce the effective payload on the mount. First test on collimation and yeah, not good. But I ran into a much bigger problem quite fast. My focusing motor is the ZWO EAF Mini. It was running into errors where it would perform the autofocus sequence just fine and when moving to the final position would get stuck and beep twice, a sign that there was an error. The only response I got from the software was to adjust the step size, which did not help. I was running into this error multiple times and decided to try to flip the tube around. My reasoning was that the focuser could not handle the weight of the camera and that a different distribution of weight would help. After that I also checked all the screws and connections but without success. This happened a couple of times and you can hear me stamping in frustration in the background. You of course don't need a focusing motor to achieve great images. But for me it's a necessary thing to sleep well in the night, knowing that any focus deviation will be corrected. The first problem to solve was the collimation, with a laser. I never adjusted a Newtonian before, but I had my decent share of experience with my previous RC telescope, so I just tried to wing it. The result of my overconfidence was a completely misaligned secondary mirror. In order to save it, I referenced a YouTube video from the channel Astro Biscuit. He explained that all you need to adjust on the secondary mirror was the angle of orientation and the tilt of one of the screws, not all three. A few minutes later I had a nicely collimated telescope. Goes to show that there's always something new to learn. But still I didn't know what to do about the focusing error. I ended up taking the entire focuser apart lubricating everything and looking for any sign of a defect. When the problem was still not gone, I experimented with the step size and realized that the focuser suffers from quite a bit of backlash. 
Backlash happens in basically all gear and belt driven devices, where when you try to reverse the movement, there's a small zone of where the gears actually need to reverse and nothing happens. The focusing motor has an option to enter a value for the backlash, which here is measured in steps, like how many steps are needed to reverse the movement and start moving back. I tested this by setting the smallest step size of 1 and then actually counted the number of steps needed after the reversal, until the small focusing knob started to move again. It turned out to be around 40 steps. Now when I tell the motor to move one step down and then one step up, it actually moves 41 steps up to achieve the same position as before. And what do you know, the autofocusing worked fine. When you find a problem in your process, the best tactic usually is to tweak one thing at a time and then test it again. In my case, I lubricated the gears, changed the step size and introduced the 40 steps of backlash. I therefore can't be certain that that was the change that solved the issue, but I'm quite confident it is, because the error always happened when the motor was reversing the direction. Another thing I did to improve the telescope's performance was to start designing my own dew shield. I noticed that stray light from a headlamp or street light can quite easily affect the image. That's why I am currently designing my own light and dew shield to give the 3D printer some work. I definitely don't want to buy a pre-made piece of plastic for 70 bucks, but I can already see myself buying it anyways if this doesn't work out. And with that I was ready. Night 2 was actually quite pleasant. Focusing worked fine which is why I want to reverse the camera orientation in the future to save some effective payload. I tested the collimation by centering the bright star Deneb and moved the focuser to the zero position. After a long exposure of one minute, this was the image that greeted me. The image of the defocused star is almost symmetrical, which is what you want for a perfect collimation. In my case, I was quite happy with the result. I did not start immediately that night, because there was a forecast of a great thunderstorm in the morning. But here we are. I now have a new and tested Newtonian telescope for many nights of astrophotography. If you have any questions about this particular telescope, you can leave them in the comments down below. I will leave you with the most recent image I've taken with this telescope. I tried to take an HDR image of Andromeda Galaxy, and the result really surprised me. But more about that in the next video. Clear skies and may the night be with us.